Hey, this is Mark at Astronomicon 2021. I'm here with legendary screen actor Michael Berryman. How you doing, sir? Doing very well. It's a Saturday. It's nice to see the families and fans coming out after a year of uh, not doing anything. When you first started out acting, did you ever think your career would be go this long and be able to go to places like this and talk to your fans? No, I was actually going to homestead in Alaska and I got sidetracked when I met a gentleman by the name of George Powell. And he said, uh, would you please be in my movie? And I said, why? And he said, well, I, I can pay you $400. I go, oh, okay. And I did, and it was fun. We worked with Ron Ely, uh, Doc Savage, the Man of Bronze. I figured, well, that was the fastest movie career on, on the planet. Ironically, his casting director, whom I had never met, saw a picture of me doing Doc Savage, and they figured that if I had some lobotomy scars, I could play in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So they called called me up. I didn't have an agent. I wound up working on uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and that was movie number two. What was that experience like working with Jack and Milos? 127 days, six days a week, 12-hour days, two weeks of rehearsals, uh, spending an hour a day with real patients. Uh, getting to understand what it's like, how our uh, people that are in mental hospitals are taken care of and or not. The film has a lot of humanity and uh, important messages and it was just an honor to work with such fine people. One of my favorite all-time films. Now, how did Wes Craven discover you? Well, at that, after I had done Cuckoo's Nest, uh, my face was in the Book of Faces, uh, which is a directory for actors that are in the Screen Actors Guild. He figured I looked like a mutant, so I could play a cannibal, and uh, they contacted my agent and said, let's have a meeting, and I met Peter Locke and Wes Craven and Barry Kahn, and we went out and shot in Super 16 out in the middle of the desert and just did guerrilla filmmaking. We had no extra sets or anything, so we had to just do everything right, and I wound up making friends for life with uh, Susan Lanier Bramlett and Dee Wallace and uh, Jimmy Whitworth and uh, Wes, I miss you, brother. Um, turned out to be uh, a cult classic, if you can imagine that. For me, the important thing about being famous or being an actor or an icon after 40-something years is my ability to play the role, do the job, but more importantly is to work with the uh, charitable organizations that various people uh, facilitate. For instance, when I met Paul Newman, he introduced me to the Bogey Creek Gang, which is an organization that finds parents with children in need that have facial cranial anomalies. For me, the only reason to be famous or have any kind of sway in that realm, since I'm not a millionaire, is to be able to make a difference in the life of children. Besides your humanitarian efforts, uh, what have you been doing lately and what do you got coming down the pipeline? Um, as far as work, I do in the conventions and I have my book. It's called It's All Good. It's at publishers right now being reviewed and I will let the whole world know when my life story that starts from Hiroshima ends in Hollywood. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Mike, and uh, I hope you have a good show. Be safe and take care of one another. Again, this is Mark with Com Experience Sci-Fi.